One of my favorite things about doing this YouTube channel is that I get sent a whole load of stuff to try out, whether it's a plugin, an app, a website, or whatever. And one landed in my inbox this week that looks really, really interesting. It's called Session Loops, and it's essentially a sample site, which is nothing new. However, they've got some really interesting features. It allows you to take any of the loops and customize them. Now, they specialize in guitar loops primarily, and you can take any of these loops and deconstruct it into different riffs, and then you can pick pitch those riffs all around on the website and download a custom loop. It's really interesting. I've had a little play around with it so far and I thought in this video today, I'm gonna to go through and make a beat with it. So this is the Session Loops website and on the face of it, it looks like most other sample sites. So for example, we can scroll down here and we can browse the different sample packs that are available. We can preview any one of these. So each one of these packs is a different kind of guitar style by a different guitarist. So let's have a look at one of these packs. I'm gonna choose this one here. Now, just like most other sample sites, once we're in the pack, we can see all the different loops that are included within here and preview any one of those. And of course you have all the usual stuff that you get on a sample site. So you have the key, the BPM, and you can download any one of these samples and start using it within your tracks. However, where this site differs from all other ones is you have this amazing feature that allows you to construct your own loops or customize any of the ones that are currently listed here. To show you this, I'm gonna click on this button here that says new loop. So this loads up like a kind of loop constructor. This allows you to take all the different elements from this sample pack and construct it into a brand new loop. So rather than just using one of those already constructed loops, all of these different samples down the right hand side here are all different kind of clips and bits from those samples. So different plucks, different kind of rhythms. It's categorized into grooves and licks and riffs. Let's start off with the grooves and now listen to a few of these. <laughs> So for example, if I really like that sample there, I can click and drag it onto this timeline here. This timeline is my brand new loop and I can kind of construct it from all the different elements on the right hand side here. And we can preview this loop by hitting the button here. But it goes so much further than that because we have a whole load of options at the top here. First off, we can decide how long we want our loop. So at the moment it's four bars, that's the default. I'm gonna make a really kind of tight loop for house music. So let's go for a two bar loop. Next up we have key, and this is where it gets really interesting because all the different clips on the right hand side here have been recorded in different keys. Not every single key, but it will actually transpose any of these samples into the key that you choose. So for example, if I'm working in E flat minor, it will transpose whatever those samples into that key. Now this works pretty much like multi samples. So not every single sample is in every single key, but there's enough of them there to then kind of pitch each one up or down, whichever is closer. Next up we have BPM. Now this defaults to whatever the clip that you put in there. So I've put a clip in there that's 72 BPM. So let's change it to that. Let's change it to a house tempo of 125. So that's now playing it back in a totally different key at a much higher BPM. And I think that sounds pretty decent actually. Now there's also an option at the top here called progression, which I'm gonna show you in a second. But first of all, let's fill out this loop. I'm gonna add that same loop back in again, this location's in here. So we've got the same thing repeating twice. So it's literally just playing that loop back in that E flat minor, but I can now go into the progression and change the progression of that loop. That one sounds really nice. I might come back to that one in a bit. Okay, so that's what we got there already. That one works quite nicely as well. I think I'm gonna go with this one. 
yeah, it's got a really nice feel to that. If I click Use Selected, we can see now that the clip has reflected that. So it's taken those kind of really simple licks that we've got in there already, that kind of groove that we've just placed in there, and it's created a whole progression out of it. And it's done in a really intelligent way, but we can go ahead and we can edit that if we want to. You can click into any of those clips and adjust the chord for each one of them. So within here, we can change the chord or the position. That sounds really cool, doesn't it? You know what, that's really given me an idea. I kind of want to do this over four bars now. So let's change this to four bars. And I'm going to put this at the end here. And now I want to copy this across. And what I can do is I can click and drag holding the Alt key. And that will copy that clip there. I'm going to go ahead and edit this. And I want to copy this one into that blank space there. So click and drag. Now there are a few bugs within here. I've noticed that are a bit weird, a bit strange. I'm not quite sure why. So I'm going to put that locations in on its own again. And I'm going to set it to whatever this one was as well. And let's try that. You know what, I'm really surprised by that. That sounds really cool. And that only took a matter of a few minutes using one single clip from that sample library. But using that progression feature, it's created this whole kind of custom loop. Now I'm gonna go ahead and name this loop because at the moment it's just called new loop. So I'm gonna call it sick guitar, for example. And then I'm gonna click add to add it to my library. So each individual uh, loop that you create are added to your library within here. So for each sample pack on this site, you have the default presets, which are the loops that have already been created for that sample pack. But then you have the My Loops tab under here, which shows you all the different loops that you've created from this sample pack. But you can also jump into My Library as well, which is where all of the loops that you create on this website are. So I've got this sick guitar loop here. I'm now going to download that. So you can actually register on this site for free and play around with it as much as you want. Create as many loops as you want to. But if you want to download any of them, then you're going to need credits to do that. Just like every other sample website, you pay a certain monthly fee to get a certain number of credits. And then you can use those credits to download samples. So as of this video in December 2021, there's actually three different plans you can choose from. You can choose the essential plan, which is 75 credits per month for $5.99 per month. That's American dollars. Or there's the artist plan, which is 200 credits per month for $9.99 per month. Or there's the studio plan, which is 1,200 credits, which is actually per year. That's $59.99 per year. So I've got that guitar loop downloaded. I'm gonna see about making a beat with it within Ableton. So I'm gonna drag and drop that to a new track in my project. Let's loop that up. And let's get some drums going within that. I want that guitar to duck it a little bit. So I'm gonna put a bit of LFO on there. Let's change up the drums a little bit. Right, let's get a bass in there and I'm going to use, I think the sub, let's go for the sub. Uh, one of my favorite patches within here, let's go for a strange thing. So we're working in D sharp on here. So I think I want this bass to follow that main guitar and I could just go ahead and kind of guess the notes from within here, but actually we already have them already because we created that guitar loop just a second ago. So I'm going to go back over to the Session Loops website, find that loop that we just created, the sick guitar loop. I'm going to open that up in the editor and now I can actually see what the uh, notes are. So we have E flat, B flat, A flat, B flat, and it pretty much just, it repeats itself again. So the next note is B flat. And then we go down to A flat and then back up to B again. So I've got those notes within here now to make it a little bit more interesting. So 
bit of side chain on that bass. And I think I want some kind of more percussion in there. Let's get a conga kind of loop in there. Let's drop that in there, see how that sounds. Let's chuck a bit of vocal in there as well. You know, I really like that as a texture. That works quite nicely. Let's drop that into here. Nice high string in there would probably work quite nicely as well. M1 on that. You know what, I've got to stop there because honestly, I forgot I was recording a video. I was just in the zone making a beat and it was all inspired from that loop that I made with session loops. Honestly, I think it's a really good starting point because I literally created the bass to go along with it and the vocals kind of went along with it as well. You know, I think this might be the next generation of sample site because usually when I jump on Splice, for example, and download samples from that, I will download multiple samples and then kind of edit them together to create unique loops. So it doesn't sound like anybody else. It doesn't just sound like I've downloaded the loop and I've just used it within my project which anybody else can do. I think that's the whole idea behind session loops is the fact that you have a sample pack but you use elements within that sample pack and create brand new loops out of it. You can change the key, the BPM, the progression that I think anybody given the same pack on session loops with the same functionality won't come up with the same loops that I will do. I think there's just so many different variations, so many different ideas that you can come up with that. I think it's really, it really makes a loop unique and I think this might be the future. And this is really kind of early days for session loops. They've really only got a small catalog at the moment, just electric guitar in there. But I can't wait to see other instruments like bass guitar, for example. Imagine it making a house track and being able to have a session bass guitar within it. That's basically what you're talking about. You're having kind of different bass grooves and stuff and you can build them up into a loop with the right progression and key for your track. I think that's going to be really amazing. But my dream is to kind of see other instruments in there, like saxophone, for example. I mean, it's incredibly hard to go on a sample site and find different clips of a saxophone and put them together in some kind of coherent, unique kind of loop because it never really works, or at least it very rarely works. So it'd be really interesting to see something like a saxophone on session loops. But I say it's really early days for the website. They reached out to me and I gave them some feedback. They're already working on that with new features to the website. So it's going to evolve and I can't wait to see the future of it. But I definitely recommend signing up with it. As I say, it's completely free to sign up. You can have a play around with it, make all the loops that you want to, have a real play around the features. And it's only when you want to download one of those loops, then you can start paying one of the plans and download those credits. So yeah, I definitely recommend signing up, having a play around with it because it's just so much fun. Right, 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 right now. I'm gonna bring the